Welcome back to week 12 of Striper Season Updates with On The Water. I'm Matt Hefner, and over the past two months, we've been bouncing around the Striper Coast, following different local bites as the bass have migrated north. Thank you all for tuning in each week to hear me talk stripers with some of the Northeast's most knowledgeable captains, shop owners, and anglers. As we near mid-June in the Northeast, the spring stripe bass migration is coming to a slow but steady halt. Last week, I spoke to Peter Jenkins, the owner of Saltwater Edge in Middletown, Rhode Island. Peter and I spoke about the many different approaches to targeting striped bass around Rhode Island and Narragansett Bay, and how the Saltwater Edge is readily equipped to assist any angler in finding what they need to have success on the water, whether by fly, surf, light tackle, or boat. Even though the migration has slowed a bit, there are still going to be some bigger fish moving around for the remainder of the month. Peter and I spoke about last week. June is generally known as the month the bass transition from following bait up the coast to holding around structure for a good deal of the summer. With fish still moving up the coast all the way to Maine and June's new moon on the way, I wanted to get a better idea of what's expected for surf casters around Cape Cod. So I figured I'd pick the brain of a surf fisherman that I personally admire, not only as an angler, but as a writer and a mentor of many sorts. Here to talk striper fishing in June around Cape Cod is on the water's very own Jimmy Fee. Welcome back, everybody. Thanks for joining us again. Uh, we got Jimmy Fee here, special guest this week. Thanks for joining, Jimmy. Hey, Matt. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to pretend that Kevin Blinkoff wasn't your first choice uh, until he had to go to Connecticut to do some kayak fishing. But, you know, I, I'm over it. I'm not that hurt. So we can uh, we can move on. Yeah, it's okay. You get to use his office for the day and pretend like you're the big man around, right? Well, Jimmy, I, I know that, uh, you know, the season's changed quite a bit since you and I were getting out on the water. Uh, I guess that was back in late April, even early May. You know, we're finding those fish, uh, striped bass back up in the rivers and whatnot, and, you know, finding them kind of close to the river mouths and estuaries, things like that. Um, biting on a lot of different bait. There was herring around, there was spearing around, um, but things have definitely changed, and those fish have moved out uh, of those early season spots. So what are you doing now to find fish with, you know, all these 30 plus pound bass, quote unquote, around the, uh, seemingly all around the Cape? Yeah, seeing a lot of great reports, boat guys getting into uh, 30 pounders and they're, they seem to be pretty widespread. I, I'd say tw I'd say 20 pounders, it's probably more widespread 20 pounders, but a lot of guys getting them from the backside of the Cape, Cape Cod Bay, Buzzards Bay, uh, hearing of some nice fish, not quite on the south side in like the Vineyard Sound rips, but m more toward the Monomoy rips. And uh, what's changed since you and I were doing some fishing, uh, you know, about a month ago, uh, looking in some of the backwaters is the reason those were so productive then is because that had the warmest water around. That's still true as you still have the warmest water up in those back creeks. But right now that's getting a little bit too hot for the striped bass. So you still have some bait back there. But most of the sizable fish, they're going to be seeking some, some cooler water. They want water in the 60s. That, that is kind of the ideal temperature for striped bass, high 50s high to high 60s. And we were actually uh, out yesterday uh, getting some bunker to bring the open water in one of the harbors. And uh, we were reading uh, water temperatures up to 72, maybe even 74 degrees back there. So that's, uh, that's getting pretty hot for striped bass. They, they can tolerate that, but uh, that's not their ideal um, water temperature there by any means. So you're, you're better off looking for, for them in open water now. One of the coolest things about uh, the spring run on Cape Cod is the variety of bait fish that you see and that the stripers get on from year to year. Uh, when I first moved up here in 2008, that was the beginning of a few great mackerel years. Like you were seeing tons and tons of Atlantic mackerel that would move in from Cape Cod Bay through the canal, even get pushed through into Buzzards Bay and Everybody had to have a mackerel colored lure then, you know, everybody was live lining mackerel. There were so many of them around that that was the hot bait. Then, you know, flash forward maybe 10 years and we had a couple incredible years with uh, short fin squid, which are, they're like an offshore species of squid, very different, not, not very different, but different from the, the long fin squid that you typically jig uh, in the lights on, on docks or you have the fleet that goes out of uh, Hyannis and catches. That's a squid that comes around every year. They move into the sound to spawn. The short fin squid, they seem to move in much greater numbers. They stay closer to the surface. And those squid are the reason. They, they are what helps striped bass earn their nickname. My favorite nickname for them, squid hounds. And, uh, you know, there were some incredible blitzes for a couple years when we had those long fin squid. But historically looking like those seem to be go, go through real boom and bust cycles. Like you have a couple years where there's a ton of them to the point that they are beaching themselves uh, on the outer cape. Uh, we had a couple of reports of that, you know, those few years back where people would find hundreds of squid washed up on the beach. And going back even further, like 30, 40 years ago, that happened quite a bit in the 70s with these short fin squid where they were, they, that seemed to be the last big cycle for them. I hope we don't have to wait another 30 or 40 years for that because uh, that was a pretty incredible bite. And, and you never know, you know, it may not take that long. 
But the last few years, I'd say maybe since 2019, the main bait around Cape Cod in the springtime has been bunker. And um, that has, uh, the big bass have certainly keyed in on those. And that's not just true in Buzzards Bay. In Buzzards Bay, you always see some number of bunker or pogies, I guess if you want to. I'm from, you know, everywhere south of Massachusetts calls them uh, bunker, but up here they call them pogies. So the bunker, they're in Cape Cod Bay. They're on the outer Cape. They're in Buzzards Bay. They had some off the south side. Uh, you're seeing them everywhere. It seems like every harbor's got a few of them um, kicking around. And there's a couple harbor bass that are that are around those bunker schools, but those seem to max out around 30, 32, 34 inches. So what most guys will do is they'll take those bunker out to structure or some, some bigger water uh, trying to find some larger bass. It's attempt with those live bunker. I did hear about some bunker moving through the canal this week too with some fish on them. But as of yet, I haven't had my, my ear to the rail too much on the canal uh, so far this year, but it sounds like there's been a couple decent bites, but not one of those like take take the day off from work, go down there, it's happening all day. It could be happening right now. I feel like this is always, you'll have a, a super warm day, middle of June, right around the moon. We'll be sitting in the office and all of a sudden I'll get a couple text messages from somebody whose uh, arms are tired from catching bass all day from 9 a.m. in the morning to uh you know the 2 p.m those kind of bankers hours blitzes but if it was going to happen it would be around now with the right now we have the full moon we're just a little bit past it and this full moon especially is bringing the bigger tides so every year it depends um you know which moon when the moon's closer to the earth which one gives the bigger tides this year it seems like the full moon's closer to the earth so it's going to have larger tides right now the peak tide in the canal last night was five knots and that is flying i mean typically you're seeing high threes low fours around the moon but five knots so you've got really extreme tides and what that does in the canal especially is those big tides are going to suck in bait from cape cod bay or from buzzards bay and then it allows the bass to kind of play goalkeeper with the bait in the canal i mean Stripers are built with that big broom tail to handle heavy currents, and uh, bait fish are not. Like a, a striped bass has no problem navigating. You know, it'll sit in ambush and you know behind a rock or a current break and wait for some bunker or some mackerel or some squid to be washed by in that current that they they simply overwhelms a bait fish. It makes a very easy meal for a striped bass. So that's why these these productive full moon tides are. Uh, that, that's when you want to kind of circle the calendar uh, for for when you want to be fishing the canal or fishing anywhere. I mean, it's, it's, it's true, you know, that the big tides aren't exclusive to the canal. You've got them on the outer Cape. You've got them everywhere around the full moon. The best bites I've been hearing about on the Cape right now, talking boat fishing seems to be off Monomoy rips, even up along to the outer Cape off race point. You've got a lot of top water action and uh, those fish are eating. I, I think there is some bunker in the mix, but you have more of a variety of bait fish there. There's some sand eels, juvenile sea herring, uh, still some squid kicking around. But that's been, sounds like guys are having a lot of fun, a lot of top water fishing, very visual stuff. That might be the pick of the week here on the Cape. But, you know, there's, like you said, there's good fish everywhere, everywhere right now. And some big bluefish in the mix too, which is kind of added to the fun. Yeah, the bluefish definitely add to the fun, uh, especially when, uh, you know, they're feeding on stuff like squid. And like you were saying, there's, you know, bunker is kind of the main bait down where we're from. And you're from Jersey. I'm from Long Island originally. And, you know, I am amazed by the buffet of bait that's up here uh there there's been squid there's been and the bluefish have been on squid that's something I, i'm not very used to so that was a really cool and exciting bite to get on um when the bass were not really readily as available right off the shore so bluefish are around that's been a great time um and those bass have been definitely biting on the outer cape i've gotten a lot of great reports from out around uh the Nauset beach up to you know up like you were saying up to the race um and that's a I think they've mostly been biting on, like you said, juvenile sea herring. I've, I've noticed a lot of sea herring uh, pushing out of those uh, estuaries that we were fishing earlier in the year. Um, so those are definitely still holding fish. But like you said, the water temperature is really going to be the main indicator of where those fish are going to be staged up. Um, and so I haven't had too much luck personally with my shoreline pursuits recently, but I am noticing the water temperatures and the amount of bait in the water. So a lot of these back bays and harbors are around 70 degrees. Um, I'm noticing fields of spearing, especially at night, um, and a lot of bunker mixed in with them. Um, they were kind of like right up on the shoreline. So it, it, it made me think that maybe there was something feeding on them, but I wasn't able to connect with anything, unfortunately. Um, however, I know the guys out on the outer Cape beaches by, uh, you know, uh, down in Chatham and whatnot, doing really well um, with really small bait. Fly guys doing really well. Um, there is spearing out there. There's also 
I don't even really know what it was, but a buddy of mine went fishing out there with him last week and um, they had really small, um, it looked like sea lances, you know, a half inch, um, just small little dart looking uh, bait. And they were just, uh, just small silver bait. So tiny rain bait. And that's why the flies really seem to be working out there. So I think it depends on where you are, um, what the fish are biting on. And uh, like you said, with this full moon tide coming in, um, that there's a lot of bait being pushed around. So you can only hope that there's even more bunker coming up from that Long Island Sound area. Sounds like they're still getting on a lot of big bass down there because of the bunker schools. So it's uh, it's it's hopeful that uh, the new moon will push even more big bass up this way after the full moon tide, rather. Yeah, right now in middle of June, we still have pretty much ideal conditions for striped bass going from, I'd say, central New Jersey, Ocean County, New Jersey, all the way on up through, uh, through pretty much Maine. Um, they're getting big bass all the way up to Boston. I know they're seeing some good ones in New Hampshire. Uh, June is the month. Like, this was always the month for me where you wanted to be everywhere, but you knew it was also going to be the best in your home waters. This was true when I worked in, uh, you know, when I lived in New Jersey. Like, I didn't want to leave home in June because I knew that was the best fishing there. That's true up here on the Cape. That's true in Rhode Island. Um, you've got ideal temperatures, tons of bait around, tons of big bait, and... You know, you just, this is the, this is when you want to, you know, put your time in on your home waters, especially, or if you want to travel, you know, you could go and hit everywhere seems to be good in June. Um, and we're definitely seeing that. I mean, the full moon ends to be, tends to be a uh, bit of a double-edged sword. I mean, you get the benefit of the stronger currents and the bigger tides, but also at night you have a very bright kind of spotlight shining on you. And that's been especially true this week. We haven't had many clouds. I don't see many clouds in the forecast. And uh, I've had some spectacular nights under a bright full moon, you know, where the fish feed with reckless abandon. And but for every one of those, I probably have 10 nights where I'm staring up at that, wishing for a single cloud to go by and, and uh, kind of cast the beach in darkness. Um, you know, people will argue whether the full moon has a negative impact uh, versus the new moon. I've definitely seen it. You know, if I look back at my logs, I have more good nights under the new moon than I do under the full moon, under a bright moon. and But it could be a matter, too, of just picking your spots. There are places, the canal, for instance, seems to be relatively moon-proof. You know, you can go there, and the fish don't seem to be as adversely affected by a bright full moon. Um, but that could be true anywhere. You know, you could go on a sand beach. I've had good nights on sand beaches under a bright moon. But every time I go out there and I think, oh, it's not going to matter, I sit there and I cast and I cast for a couple small fish. And then, uh, you know, I just wish it had been a, a cloudy night. But you don't know if you don't go. It's the type of thing where if you uh, if you say you're going to stay in because of a bright full moon, then you're going to hear your buddy went and he hammered him. And uh, it's it's beautiful out there right now. Nights are about 50, high 50, 60 degrees, really comfortable. You know, it's it's always good to get out and, and make some casts. better than, than hearing about it the next day, even if you don't catch that much. Like I didn't last night. I was out last night, uh, bright full moon. Had several, you know, let's say 26 to 36 inch, not 36, 26 to 30 inch fish. And uh, for, for pretty good effort last night. Nice night to be out. Would have liked to have stuck a bigger fish, but uh, still, I'm glad I went out and checked it out anyhow. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you're at least getting on some fish because I am uh, I am having experiencing the great skunk of 2022 where uh, I can't seem to to find the, uh, or at least I'm finding the bait and I'm finding the bass, but I can't seem to trick them. And I don't know what, what I'm doing wrong, but, um, I, you know, they're, like I was saying, there's all these different types of bait around. So I think that they're just really keyed in on certain types of bait. I know one of the nights I went out, um, I actually was, I prompted me to go to the, get my fly reel spooled up the next day because, uh, it, I saw this grass shrimp around and I'm seeing all this spearing and all this really tiny bait that I know that the bass are going to be slurping right off the top, but because they're so keyed in on it, they're not going to hit something like a plug. So can you talk about kind of like the different environments that the Cape has, whether it's outer Cape versus South Cape or the flats on Cape Cod Bay, and, you know, maybe some of the different options that you have uh, in terms of, you know, what you would fish in, in one area versus in another, because I'm starting to get to the point where, you know, I usually throw artificials, but I'm starting to get to the point where I'll throw flies and i'm gonna maybe start chunking with bait because i don't know exactly what these bass want right now so it's time to get kind of experimental with these things around the full moon tide yeah uh it's like you said there the cape has a, a wide variety of environments you've got the the actual true surf you know on the outer cape where you have the waves and those fish tend to be on uh sand eels have been the traditional bait out there but you're seeing some big bunkers sometimes those come into uh in the surf range 
Uh, a lot of times this time of year, you will see the juvenile Atlantic herring, which could be anywhere from thumbnail size on up to two, three inches in the basket on those. Whenever I'm fishing uh, the sand beaches down Cape or, uh, you know, say even in Cape Cod Bay, I like needlefish. I throw a lot of teasers out there. I throw the teasers if the fishing's tough. Like if I know, if I think the fish are there, they're kind of bumping the plugs, I'll put on, I always like the red gill teaser. Uh, that's, it's kind of a, not quite soft plastic. I don't know what it's made of, but almost vinyl. And it's uh, a great sand deal limitation. That one's good. But the, the trade off with the teaser is it's going to cost you casting distance. Um, but I use it. Sometimes I'll start with it. And uh, the fish will, uh, if I see more fish hitting the plug or the fish seem to be hitting the plug just as well, I'll, I'll lose the teaser. Uh, but the uh, that's a good, you know, if you're seeing the fish on small bait, that's a great way to go if you don't want to fly fish. Minnow plugs are a tough one to beat. I mean, if you are struggling to catch bass, I would say, man, clip on an SP minnow or a red fin or a bomber. Um, I would lean toward the SP minnow and the red fin and just keep hammering that like there's no nowhere where those won't catch fish um from the, the sand beaches to the canal to to you know a rocky boulder field that is kind of a catch-all may not always be the best choice for tempting a big bass but some of the largest bass i've ever heard of and one of the largest bass i ever saw caught have been on minnow plugs uh, i watched a guy catch a 53 pounder on a school bus bomber um well, actually it was a chicken scratch bomber and then I saw another guy, or uh, there was another guy a couple years ago, got a fit, that was a June fish, the 53. In November, uh, about 10 years ago, a guy got a 58 pounder on a black bomber. So it is a big fish bait. Uh, it's one that I always have in my bag, the, a few minnow plugs. I would, I would say stick to those, man. Yeah, I mean, that's like I said, that's kind of what I've been throwing. And uh, I'm almost wondering if it's just because the uh, the conditions have been, you know, not really in my favor. We were talking about uh, the brightness of the moon, and I, and I don't necessarily think that takes away from the bite. Um, I think sometimes it can actually help it. When I'm fishing with swimming plugs like that, I, I, I haven't been having any luck. And the reason I think that it is is because I personally favor spots that have wind, and I like when the wind is blowing right in my face. And I don't know if the moon and the brightness of the moon and uh, during the full moon really makes that much of a difference, but I do... I always think that, you know, having a little bit of chop, whether you're throwing top water or something like a swimming plug will kind of uh, help help produce a bite just because I don't know if the fish can't see it as well or what, but it's something along something along those lines that the fish really seem to hone in on, you know, when there's a wind, when there's wind blowing right in your face, they're pushed up a little closer to the shore and they're willing to take a bigger bait because maybe they can't see it as well or, you know, I, I, whatever the case might be. But I, I have been throwing those kinds of plugs and you know, it's frustrating when you're, you're seeing all the bait and you think you're doing all the right things and you're finding the fish, but uh, you, you really can't seem to trick them. Um, so I, I think I'll just keep doing that. I'll keep hammering away at it. Um, but, you know, over the next month, I'd like to start hitting the canal and stuff like that. So what do you think changes as we, you know, head through the month of June? I know the, the new moon is like the mythical moon uh, that most guys look forward to. And a lot of people will take the full moon to rest. So what uh what are you kind of hoping will change as as june progresses and, and that new moon rolls around you know here in uh in massachusetts we're still due for a couple more pushes of fish i mean you generally around the moons you can count on seeing here's a school of fish arriving from the south um and they will either you know go around the long way around the cape and you'll see them pop up in the rips and on the outside or they'll go up through buzzards bay through the canal and then hit cape cod bay and the south shore of massachusetts uh eventually up to boston harbor there's a push happening now. Like it, there's there's a, a fresh school of fish that arrived here. And part of the reason I know that right now is because just over the past, I want to say five days, maybe seven days, we've seen fi the fish show up um, that have all the red sores on them. And you can almost count on every year these fish showing up middle of June. And they are, I mean, some of them are, are you know, have just a couple. Some of them are really red and rashed up. Uh, Kevin and I talked about last year that last year in striper season update, um, you, you know, everybody thinks that's mycobacteriosis, which is, a, you know, a, a pretty devastating uh, de disease for striped bass. They, the Chesapeake fish get it, and they say like a, a large percentage of them have it, but that's not always the case. I mean, there's a lot of ways striped bass can pick up skin lesions, can be parasites, can be just from being in a school and bumping each other, um, could be from poor fish handling. But these are probably, you know, some of the rashy fish coming from warmer southern waters, uh, most likely Chesapeake fish. And um, 
so this is we're, we're definitely seeing some more fish come up and this always comes with some of the largest fish of the season um whether or not uh those are being caught somewhere and uh, guys aren't talking but seeing a lot of like slot fish you know say 30 36 inch fish have these uh these lesions on them and that's uh, always an indication of another push that, that just moved in now as we move on to the june new moon we'll probably see another another wave of fish move through then and then things start to settle down. The bass kind of hunker down in certain areas. They'll vacate, you know, by and large, waters like Bussard's Bay in favor of cooler waters like, you know, let's say off, uh, you know, off Martha's Vineyard, off Cuddy Hunk, off Block Island, um, in Cape Cod Bay, off the Outer Cape, and then, then points north up through, uh, you know, Boston, North Shore, Maine. Um, so that's going to all happen you know, toward the end of this month, we still have some of this, this great spring run fishing ahead of us where you have some of the fishing frenzies, then things settle down a bit. Still, uh, there's still some great fishing, but it, it's going to take a little bit more work to, uh, to uncover where the fish are holding. But the good news is if you find them in the summer, that's a pattern that can repeat itself over and over again as the, the conditions stabilize. So if you find some fish in, you know, on the July moon, you know, July new moon, you know, there's a good chance they'll be there for the August new moon because the uh, the, the conditions aren't going to change all that much between those two. And, um, you know, you can have some great summer fishing. It's just a little bit more work so to, to track them down. Yeah, and I'm glad you brought that up, though, that those fish really do kind of stick around. And, and I think that's when it's a great time to start keeping a log because you're able to kind of, you know, keep track of where you're finding these fish, especially in the summer months when things do get really tough. So, Keeping a log is something I didn't do until this past season, and uh, it's helped immensely. But, you know, like I said, I'm in a new environment. I'm fishing around a lot of different bait that I typically wouldn't have, you know, seen as much of, I should say, down on Long Island. So I, I'm, I'm chalking it up to, you know, adjusting to a new fishery entirely. But I'm glad you brought that up about the fish hunk hunkering down because that's something Peter uh, Jenkins and I spoke about last week. Um, and it's starting to happen already in Narragansett Bay. They're finding fish holding on to big pieces of structure. Um, and kind of conserving their energy and waiting for those pods of bunker and things to move with the tide right past the, you know, where they're kind of hunkered down. And Narragansett Bay is a great spot. It's really deep. It's got a lot of rocky structure to it. Um, and uh, there's certain parts of the Cape that are the same way. But um, what kind of structure do you tend to look for when you're fishing, you know, the, around the Cape, I guess, in, in the middle of June or towards the end of June? Man, it's less so structure I'm looking for than good current. I want to find some good moving water and then a current break within that water. So it's not specifically I'm looking for points. I'm looking for this. I mean, I, I fish a lot of different places throughout the year. I'll, I'll fish, you know, rocky boulder fields going down to Rhode Island. I'll fish, obviously, the outer Cape, Cape Cod Bay. Um, I'll fish the south side of the Cape and some of those outflows and in, inlets there. So I'm looking for a current break or a current seam where a fish can set up and, uh, and, and ambush the bait. So that could be if you're on the outer Cape, you're looking for a, a sandbar or a cut in the sandbar or a big bowl or a trough. Um, you know, if you're fishing the canal, you're looking for little current breaks. And, and there's some that uh, get overlooked by the, the larger masses. You know, people go there and they're looking for breaking fish in a lot of cases. And you can actually find some current breaks and seams just by going there at low tide and watching how, the instead of looking for breaking fish, look how the water moves. You know, you'll see places where it's accelerating over like a little shallow spot. And that's a good place to go, especially, uh, you know, you go back there at night. Um, that's more so than looking for bait. I'm looking for stuff like that, for, for breaks in the current, for places where a striped bass is uh, likely to set up and feed. Um, one of my, one of the best fish I ever caught, I had, it was a spot that I identified in the canal that was like a little bit of a current break and it'd be, it was easy to overlook. I, I'm, I'm certain, you know, there's guys that fish everywhere in the canal. I'm certain I, I wasn't the person that discovered it, but I noticed it for the first time uh, in the middle of summer and then just happened to lose a really big fish there. And then I came back to that area in October. Like I was, it was, season was nearing its end. I hadn't, you know, was running out, you know, the, the playbook was, was played out. I hadn't found any fish, just wanted to get one last good one. And that one I, I thought of like, okay, you know, I lost a good fish there in July. What not going to hurt to go make a couple casts there. You know, went back to that current break on the same time, ended up catching a, uh, a big, beautiful striped bass to finish my season on. And uh, so that's, that's most important, especially when you get up, up here um, in the summer months, as the fish settle in, 
you're looking for places where fish are ambushing and holding throughout the ties, as opposed to just following bait around and looking for my big schools of migrating fish. Yeah. Yeah. Those current breaks are huge and they're a little bit easier to locate when you're at like inshore spots or fishing around inlets and things like that. So, you know, learning how to locate those current breaks and, and hitting some of your favorite spots, maybe at low tide and, and not even doing fishing, but just observing kind of the open beach and seeing how the water kind of moves just as it, as the tide comes in or even goes out. You know, I think those, those, uh, those kinds of exploratory missions are real beneficial when it comes to finding stripers on an open beach, at least in the summer months. Um, you know, those current breaks and, and those drops will hold a lot of fish. That's probably one of the most important things of uh, being a surf fisherman. And one of the things that's going to help you the most is being able to read the water, looking at how, uh, learning how the water moves and what, what, you know, something on the surface means for what's at, what's going on underneath the surface. Um, and once you get an idea of that, you'll be able to unlock all kinds of places. I think one of the most important things about being a surf fisherman, uh, and one of the things that separates, uh, some of the more successful surf fishermen with, with some of the guys who were just learning is being able to read the water, being able to look at what's happening, what the water's doing on the surface, and then painting a picture of what is actually underneath there. And that will, that's going to help you in the long run because there's not always bait around to see on the surface and chase around. There's not always breaking fish, but if you can read the water, you can identify places where the fish are likely to hang and, and striped bass, as much as they do blitz on the surface, they are, you know, that tail makes them predominantly ambush feeders, uh, you know, so they're going to hang in places, current breaks, sit there and wait for a meal to, to come by. And that big square tail is good for short bursts of, of very fast speed that lets them overtake a bait and eat it, then they'll return right back to that, that little ambush point. So if you can identify those places, you know, by, based on what the water's doing, uh, then that that's going to be the key. And that's something we've, we've written about quite a bit and run stories on quite a bit and on the water. We can put some links to that in the, uh, in the description here, but that's, uh, that's, you know, probably the skill that you'll want to develop throughout the, uh, throughout the summer here. And, and, uh, we'll, we'll get out there. We'll do some of that together. Yeah, absolutely. I'm looking forward to it, man. Well, thank you for sharing all your, your insight into, uh, striper fishing around the Cape. I know it's, uh, it, we've had a couple of technical difficulties here, but I can't thank you enough for hopping on the show this week and sharing a little bit about your, you know, your season so far. So, um, let's, you know, make a plan to get out there maybe later this week or next week. Sounds good, Matt. Thanks for having me on, man. Awesome. Thanks for joining, Jimmy. Appreciate it. That's all the time we have for this week. Thanks again to Jimmy Fee for talking stripers and surf casting around Cape Cod. There's a plethora of bait around the Cape right now, whether you're fishing around Buzzards Bay, Monomoy, or Cape Cod Bay. And as the new moon approaches, we can expect somewhat of a behavioral shift as bass go from following schools of bait while they migrate to finding a place to hunker down and feed all summer. Look for that moving water with temperatures in the 60s. And keep in mind some of the lures that Jimmy finds to be most productive when the going gets tough. But sometimes, finding the bait is not the key to success. Just like I spoke about with Peter Jenkins last week, bass are beginning to move into their summer dwellings. And being able to accurately read the water in a variety of these environments will increase the likelihood of finding fish that are willing to feed. I'll personally be taking some of Jimmy's advice about finding current breaks and eddies during my next couple of outings. Minnow plugs are a great go-to, and their various sizes, colors, and actions can imitate a wide variety of local forage throughout the summer. If you want to keep up with Jimmy's surf casting adventures throughout the season, you can use the link below to follow him on Instagram. Remember that if you haven't signed up for Striper Cup, you can still do so using the link below in the description as well. And for more info on all things striper fishing, head to onthewater.com, follow us at On The Water Magazine on social media, and check back next week for another striper season update from On The Water.